So far, we've sketched the graphs of two quadratic equations using tables of values. However, we don't want tables of values to be our go-to method because they don't always find the vertex and the intercepts, which end up being some of the most important points on a parabola. So what we're going to do in this video is focus on how we can find the x and y intercepts. And then in the next lesson, we'll talk about how to find the vertex. So we're going to look at an example. Let's sketch a graph of y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And we're not going to use a table of values. Instead, we're going to look at the intercepts. So we know to find the x-intercept, we need to let x equal 0. We did this before when we used the intercept method when we were graphing lines. If we let x equal 0, then this becomes y equals 2 times 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 2. But anything times 0 ends up being 0. So these terms are going to cancel, and we'll just be left with negative 2. So in this case, the y-intercept is negative 2. The y-intercept is negative 2. Let's plot this on the plane. A y-intercept of negative 2 is going to be at negative 2 on the y-axis. That's going to end up being right about here. So we know that that's where the y-intercept the y is. And in fact, the y-intercept is always just going to be the constant term. The reason for this is because the y-intercept comes from setting x equal to 0. And when we let x be equal to 0, these first two terms are always going to cancel out. So the y-intercept is always going to be equal to the constant term, which we usually denote with the letter c. So if we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the y-intercept is going to just be c. That's really nice because we can get that without doing any math. We just need to look at the equation that we're given. Next, let's move on to the x-intercepts. These are going to be a little bit more work. Remember, to find the x-intercepts of a graph, we need to let y be equal to 0. If we replace y with 0, then this gives us 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. To find the x-intercepts, we need to solve this equation. And we recognize that this is a quadratic equation, which is something that we've spent several lessons learning how to solve. We have a few different methods that we can use. If this is factorable, we can factor it and then use the zero factor property. We also can potentially use the square root property which works best when we already have a perfect square trinomial, which in this case we don't. And if neither of those work, we can use the quadratic formula. Let's try and factor this to see if that's going to work. What method should we use to factor this polynomial? Well, there's no GCF. It's a trinomial. And so the trinomials, we either use unfoiling or the AC method. Which works here? Well, we're going to have to use the AC method because we have a leading coefficient. So in this problem, AC is going to be negative 4 because we've got 2 times negative 2. And B is equal to 3. So we're looking for two numbers with a product of negative 4 and a sum of 3. Those numbers end up being 4 and negative 1. When we're using the AC method, once we find those numbers, we can use them to split the middle term. So we're going to keep the 2x squared there, but then this 3x is going to become 4x and then minus 1x minus 2. And once we've split the middle term, we can finish factoring by grouping. 
The first group has a GCF of 2x, and when we pull it out, our leftovers are x plus 2. In the second group, we can pull out a negative 1, also leaving us with x plus 2. So the factored form is going to be x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. So we have 0 equals x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Once we factored this, we can set each factor equal to 0 and solve. x plus 2 equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. When we solve the first one, we end up with x equals negative 2. The second one takes two steps. After we add 1, we get 2x equals 1. And when we divide by 2, we get x equals 1 half. So the x-intercepts are going to be negative 2 and 1 half. Let's plot those. To plot negative 2, we need to go to the left 2. So it's going to go right there. And then for positive 1 half, we need to go to the right 1 half, which is going to be halfway between 0 and 1. So the other x-intercept is here. Now, we have three points on the parabola, these three. Is this parabola going to open upwards like this or downwards like this? Well, you might be able to tell just from the points, but also the leading coefficient is positive, so we know it's going to be opening upwards. So it's going to be some sort of parabola that goes through these. Now, what I am going to do to make it a little bit nicer, because three points really isn't enough to get a good idea of what the parabola is going to look like, I am going to pick one or two other x values to make a little table of values so that I can figure out some more points, because here we don't really know how steeply it's going to be going up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick x equals 1, and that's just going to give me one additional point Actually, let's, let's, let's do two of them. Let's also do negative one. Because if we do negative one, that tells us how far down the parabola is going to go. So let's choose one and negative one. These are a couple of extra points. And in the next lesson, once we learn how to find the vertex, we're not going to have to go through this extra step because we'll have another point and a little bit more information. But Always, if you're graphing something and you don't feel like you have enough information about what the graph looks like, you can always make a table of values to get some more points. So let's plug in 1 and negative 1 to our 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. If x is 1, we've got 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 2. 1 squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, so we've got 2 plus 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2. 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 2 takes us back to 3. So when x is 1, y equals 3, and that gives us the point 1 comma 3 right there. Now let's plug in negative 1 for x. Negative 1 squared is also positive 1, and 2 times 1 gives us 2. In the next term, 3 times negative 1 is going to be negative 3, so that's going to be a minus 3, and then minus 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, minus 2 is negative 3, so we've got the point negative 1 comma negative 3, which is going to be down there. And now that we have 5 points instead of 3, we can have a better idea of what this parabola is going to look like. It's going to look something like that. This is y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Please go through the example problems linked below so that you can get some practice graphing these. And this is going to help you in the next lesson when we add in the vertex and we're graphing beautiful parabolas that are very accurate because we'll know exactly where the vertex goes. We won't have to guess. We know where all the intercepts go and so our graphs will be beautiful.